live from the Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia, the Virginia Commonwealth University Rams take on the University of Richmond Spiders in the first of four contests today and tonight. Following the VCU Richmond contest, it'll be East Carolina taking on American University. And then tonight's doubleheader tips off at 7 o'clock with Old Dominion, the second seed against James Madison. The nightcap will pit UNC Wilmington against William and Mary. March Madness, alive and well in the Richmond Coliseum. Hi, everybody. I'm John Castleberry, my broadcast partner today, former Richmond head coach Dick Tarrant. And, Dick, we've got four great matchups, and we kick things off with a crosstown rivalry. A couple of ball clubs know each other well. In fact, they met just last weekend. Yes, well, as we look at the field, VCU is the odds-on favorite for three particular reasons. One, psychologically, they've defeated every team in the league at least twice, except East Carolina with whom they've split. Secondly, physically, they're well-rested. While all the other teams competed this week, VCU was off. They had an open week. Third, emotionally, they're on their home floor, and they're going to be playing before their home crowd. The bulk of this audience should be VCU's. Now, now permit me to say something, John. There's only been one team since 1988 who's been seated one who's gone to the, to the national tournament. And I can recall one particular coach who for three years came in here seated number one and went to the NITs. That would be this man when he was in charge of the University of Richmond Spiders. Now, Richmond looked pretty good last night and went over George Mason. One of their keys obviously has to be the play of sophomore forward Gerard Stevens. Well, Gerard Stevens, all during February, has had a, a red-hot month. He's averaging 19 points a game while shooting 50% from behind the arc, 40% from the floor, 83% from the free throw line. So he's been really good. In fact, last Saturday at the Robbins Center, Sonny Swift had to go to a box and one to contain him. His sidekick is Eric Poole. Now, Poole's a pretty solid kid for 12, 12, 12 points and 8 rebounds every game. Poole will have to fight big today to contend with BCU's front line. BCU comes at you with a lot of weapons. They have some strength in the backcourt, but really, this basketball team's strong suit is inside, led by the Conference Player of the Year, Bernard Hopkins. Well, Hopkins has remarkable statistics. He's everybody's choice. There's some intangibles about Hopkins that I like. One, he can bring the ball up against the press. He can run the middle of a fast break. He gets out and finishes on the fast break. And he's a very special player who they'll go to when the game is on the line. His sidekick in the backcourt is Sherman Hamilton. Hamilton has improved as the year's gone on, especially defensively. But he's a primary ball handler, he's a primary three-point shooter, and he'll be a key man today. Helping out on today's broadcast is Melissa Stark. Let's check in right now as Melissa will be roaming the sidelines here at the Coliseum. Well, it's an, thanks, God. It's an exciting day here out at the Richmond Coliseum. All of the CAA coaches and players have been looking forward to this first weekend in March all season long. Now, historically, only one team in the CAA gets a bid to go to the NCAA tournament, and that is the winner of this tournament here this weekend. So the stakes are high. Now, you have to know, a chance to go to the Nationals is a dream come true for all of these young players out here this weekend. And they've been thinking about this opportunity ever since they first took, 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 a, took a step onto the basketball court. And so we'll be looking, for, we'll be looking forward to the results out here today with, as the excitement and the emotion, the emotion and intensity continues on. Guys. All right, thanks, Melissa. Well, you know, Dick, over the years, some strange things have happened in this tournament. Well, I can remember vividly in 1991, James Madison came in as number one seed and a strong favorite to win it. And Navy, at number eight seed, upended him on the corresponding day and the corresponding time slot to this game today. Will history repeat itself? We'll find out. We meet the starting lineups and have this afternoon's opening tip-off right after this. Thank you, George. Let's take a look at the starting lineups as Richmond set to take on BCU. See Stevenson and Chapel. That's a good matchup. Poole, Edwards, Baker, and Cueto round up the Spiders starting five. And then it's the player of the year, Hopkins, Bird in the middle, and the backcourt of Lee and Hamilton. Well, Hamilton and Lee will be important because I think Bill Dooley is going to have to is going to have to do some zoning in order to slow this tempo down. Another good matchup is Chapel playing Stevenson. Last week he was too much, and they had to go to a box and one to quiet him down. Our referees, Sam Croft, Ramey Steins, and Sean Holland. Just about set to get underway here. Quarterfinal action of the CAA tournament. VCU won two times this year, once very impressively by 28 points. In fact, a 28-point margin back on January 20th, the largest margin in the history of this series. I hope that doesn't happen again today. I don't think so. The tip is going to be controlled by the Spiders. And they'll set the offense with Cueto, who, again, Richmond coming off a, a victory last night, but they had to play at 6 o'clock, so they may not have the legs that they would need. And a turnover. This is Lee with the basketball for the Rams. Inside. Edwards clears the board for the Spiders. Now 
Now Stevenson to Jonathan Baker, who had a career high of 30 last night. Just a freshman, Jonathan Baker. Both teams are man-to-man. -man. Both teams probing each other now with some ball movement, reversal. It's some motion going. Clock is winding down, however. This is Stevenson with it. Has it slapped away, and another turnover. This is Hopkins. Up the floor to Chapel. Ram strike first. That's the transition basketball that's gotten them to a, the number one seed in this tournament. They're a very good transition team, and Chapel's their best finisher. He can finish with thundering, thundering dunks as well as power layups. Stevenson looking for help. Gets it to Cueto. Down low to Edwards. Cueto fires a three, misses everything, partially blocked, and Bird gets it up the floor. Hopkins. And Chapel again finishes it. This team is very good in transition. VCU is a fine, fine transition team. Their defense is very sound. They're, they've got fresh legs, and they're really getting after the Spiders. Now Baker will try. Edwards back door a little bit. A little bit too strong with the pass. Three quick turnovers against Richmond. We need a, we need a timeout. Bill is going to take a 20 second timeout to try to calm these kids down. You know, Dick, obviously uh, a lot of VCU fans here. There are some Richmond fans, but this is VCU's home court. How big an advantage is it in a tournament? Think, I think it's tremendous. I don't care where anybody tries to soft, soft soak this thing. This is VCU's home floor, and they're going to have the, being a number one team, they have the biggest following. And I think by far it'll be emotionally in their favor. Right now, I see very strong, quick legs on defense by VCU. They've created three turnovers already. Last night, the Spiders only had 10 in 40 minutes against George Mason. The difference is George Mason played a very passive zone and the Spiders could just pick their spots and shoot as they will. Right now, uh, VCU is getting after them with, with good pressure man-to-man -man defense. I'm right in your jersey. Let's see you do something. The result has been three turnovers. Now Hamilton across the timeline for VCU. Takes it all the way in. Bird loses the handle, but he gets fouled. So far, VCU is making it look easy. Well, they're very aggressive, and aggressive defense kicks off your offense, and, and they've been very, very sound in their man-to-man -man defense. Personal against Eric Poole, his first, team's first, and Bird's at the line for a couple of foul shots, a 63% shooter. Five-nothing, VCU. Sonny Smith, of course, the CAA Coach of the Year. Rightly so. There isn't a final guy in the game in summer. He's already a great man. Bird makes it a 6-0 VCU advantage. Now they'll set the offense in the half court. This is Cueto, young man out of St. Anthony's up in New Jersey. Edwards, hook shot, again, an air ball. VCU on the run. Lee to Bird. Now Chapel. he's got a three. Chapel with seven quick points. He's got seven of the Rams, nine, and they're pitching a shutout. Spiders haven't even gotten a good look at the target. They haven't even gotten a shot on the rim. Cueto with a pick to Baker. Baker back to Stevenson. Hopkins with the steal. Bernard's taking it all the way. They gotta stop it. They gotta stop the flow. 16-38. Bill Dooley forced to take a full timeout. One of three. He's allotted. 11-0. VCU in charge early. It's all Rams so far. VCU very much in charge here. Six possessions, four turnovers, and here's one of them. Well, the defense kicks off the offense. You see him double-team the ball, and Hopkins jumps into the passing lane to the next logical receiver, steals it, goes down, and finishes with a thundering dunk. The defense kicks off the offense. They're playing great defense. The Spiders really can't get on track. 
One of the keys in this game was Sonny Smith up in the tempo to play a fast break game. A lot of running involved and they're doing it perfectly. Richmond really struggling to, to get a good look at it right now as pool double dribble. Seven check that five turnovers in seven possessions. It just goes to prove what great pressure man to man defense can do. They're just right inside the Spiders jersey and they're, they're coughing the ball up five times. Last night they had 10 in 40 minutes. This is Hamilton met by Cueto. Now Chapel. Patrick Lee, 16 footer, a little bit too strong, and Baker has it for Richmond. Now Baker starts to penetrate. To pool. Poole with a strong move. Too hard off the glass, and Hopkins has it for the Rams. Hamilton for three. Edwards clears the board for Richmond. Notice Hopkins in the middle of the break last time. He can do many things. Now Cueto loses the handle, partially blocked, and Hopkins up the floor to Hamilton, who runs it down and takes a timeout. It'll be a 20-second timeout for VCU, so Hamilton with good presence of mind. And Dick, as a coach, I, I would imagine Bill Dooley is living his worst nightmare right now. 11-0 to a quality basketball team. His ball club's not fresh, and with each basket and each turnover, the pro VCU crowd gets that much more into it. And, and, the, and the conference level slips away from the Spiders. They can just see the, the anxiety on their face. They just can't get untracked. Billy, uh, Dooley is trying to run some what they call pressure release plays now to take the heat off. But the guard play is terrific. Lee is pressing up on Baker so they can't get into their sets. Uh, Hamilton do a good job of pressing out on Cueto. And the more you press out, the more it pulls the team off its offensive zone. So they're running their offense at a distance at which they're not very comfortable. Sonny, of course, uh, very successful at several schools. In fact, he's now been coach of the year in four different conferences. Well, Sonny's mama told him he was... He was born at night, but it wasn't last night. He got after these fighters today. He knew he was rested, and they were tired, and he just jumped them from the get-go. Cueto, and again, good defense by Hamilton. It'll be Richmond basketball. This is a very focused VCU team right now. They look like they're playing in the final game rather than the first. They're really getting after it. Cueto, nice dish to Edwards. Finally, Richmond on the scoreboard. Took him nearly five minutes. 447 to be exact. And a three. Bernard Hopkins, second three-pointer of the year. He made one in the final game. Everybody went wild with it. Here's one when he pulled up and hit a three. This guy can do it all. Hopkins with five early points, and it's VCU by 12. Now Poole, another double dribble against Richmond. Six turnovers in five minutes and 14 seconds. These kids are completely unnerved. I'm wondering if the jury might put some different people in. Just to, these kids are really big time nervous right now. Here comes some reserves. And the Spiders have switched over to his own. Hamilton in no big hurry. Now Hopkins gets pushed. They're going to call Edwards before the shot, I believe. He'll be number one on. Rick Edwards, second team foul against the Spiders. Rick Edwards, that's his first team second substitution for the Spiders in the line of Jason McKinney. Jason McKinney checks in, a 6'10 player out of Manchester, New York. And now foul is going to be called against VCU, an illegal pick on the inbounds play. Here comes a, a two platoon. Uh, Sonny's going to put in five fresh legs, five sets of fresh legs. That foul was on Patrick Lee, his first, team's first. And well, we will see five new bodies. Ben Peabody, Marlo Talley, Scott Marston, Jonathan Smith, and Marcus Reed. VCU is just going to wear the Spiders down. One way or the other, they're going to keep, keep after them. With, with, and they have quality depth. He gets 29% of his scoring from the bench, which is really uh, remarkable. Now this is Baker, who had a tournament record, eight three-pointers last night inside to Poole, who lays it up. Nice reverse by Eric Poole. There's a nice high-low sequence. And Poole had his man locked and pinned, and he just rolled to the basket for a nice, nice um, sequence there. VCU by 10. 
Spiders got a two free zone, John. This will slow the tempo down. Zones will slow tempo. A lot of passing, a lot of probing. Now Reed. And the shot up and good. Marlowe tally. Good ball movement, very high percentage shot. Tally put it home. VCU, 67% so far, six out of nine from the field. Now a kick against VCU, so they'll reset the shot clock. Bill Dooley's been through a lot with this ball club this year. It hasn't been easy. Now Cueto gets it to Jonathan Baker. McKinney. Now Cueto again. To Poole. Poole fakes and gets fouled. May have gotten Smith on that one. Now Big Jonathan Smith, his first, second team. You see that body on Big John Smith? He didn't get that eating lettuce. See that? He never got that eating lettuce, John. That's about 280. It was an up and under by Poole when Smith came down on top. Once you flare your arms, you're pretty much asking the referee to blow that whistle. So it was a pretty easy call for the refs. Now, Poole is only a fair free throw shooter at best. Well, they need every one of them. Oh, they need every, they got to get back in this game with anything they can get them back in with. Down by 12, and Poole hits. He's got three of Richmond's five. He's one of those line drive free throw shooters. You got to get a little air under there. If you want him to go in consistently, you got to lift it up and get some arc. Lift it up, Eric. You bend the rim. Well, he connects twice. I, I wouldn't have you punted it. You can punt him in as long as they go in. Marcus Reed on the attack. Good look inside to Smith. VCU basketball. Am I imagining things over VCU legs very fresh? Well, they yeah. haven't played since last Saturday. Yeah. Those spiders look like they carry around about $20 worth of coin in their pockets. Well, McKinney breaks it up. It'll be VCU ball once again. Did you get that one, John? $20 worth of coin and nickels and dimes and quarters. A lot of quarters in there. Of course, they're heavy-legged, I'll tell you. I'm not making excuses for them. But they are a little heavy-legged. This is Peabody. And he scores. Terrific baseline move by Ben Peabody. Just a great athletic move. Five different Rams have scored, and they lead it by 12. Now Stevenson, who really needs to get on track. To Cueto. Now McKinney, his foul line jumper, goes. Jason McKinney. It's the Spiders within 10. Now Tally, a long three, and he got it. Marlo Tally with five off the bench. The Rams by 13 big points. The Rams are humming. The Rams hum, um, I guess I should say something <laughs> else. Rams don't hum, but they're cooking pretty good. They certainly are. Now McKenney again at the high post. And it's slapped away. This is Tally. Tally gets clobber from behind. And tempers flare. Quickly, Sonny Smith off the bench trying to get his ball club to back off and not even get, get involved in a situation that could turn ugly. Well, it'll be it'll be a terrible thing for a VCU player to retaliate and swing a fist because he'll be out of the next game. Well, and they so, called the they called the flagrant foul. Also. I think it should be. See, you can be going for the ball, even if you go for the ball, if it's if the referee deems it unnecessarily rough, then it's a two. He said, well, I was going for the ball. It makes no difference you're going for the ball. When your foul is that severe, that's an intentional foul. Two shots plus the basketball coming up for VCU and Marlowe Talley. See, Bill Dewey is arguing the fact with, with referee Sam Croft that McKinney was going for the ball. That's true. He was going for the ball. But when the, the foul was that severe and that overt, then the referee can deem it an intentional foul, even though he was going for the ball. He was going for the ball, but he went through his head to get it. That's right. Tally hits the first. Tally a 66% foul shooter. He's got six points. This is one of the best reserves in, in this league. He comes off the bench. Every time I've seen Tally, he's been very productive off the bench. And this is that one, but the lead 14. Now BCU gets the basketball because of the flagrant foul. 11.54 left to go in this first half. BCU 
in charge early. Welcome back to the Richmond Coliseum. I'm joined by CAA Commissioner Tom Yeager. And Commissioner, VCU is on a run right now, number one seed in the tournament. What has their addition meant to the CAA? Well, it's a terrific impact, obviously, here in the Richmond market. But, you know, apart from that, they're the number one seed, and they played well, and uh, they're going to bring uh, a lot of folks out here to the tournament. It's a great addition. What are, the, what are the particular thrills for you during tournament time? Oh, just having a, an exciting tournament and everybody having a good time and watching our team go to the NCAA tournament where we've had a great record. Okay, great. Thanks, Commissioner. John? All right, thanks, Melissa. VCU with the basketball after the flagrant foul. They lead it by 14. And now it's stolen by Stevenson on the inbounds, and he's going to get fouled. They'll whistle it against the Rams. Stevenson made a very heads-up play on the inbounds play. They took away all the inside options, and on, and on the pass out, he, Stevenson makes a very half-around play and intercepts the pass out to the point, and as he breaks away, uh, Peabody stepped in and took the block. Number but it was a very on, fine play by Stevenson. Number one on Peabody, third team foul against VCU, and Jonathan Baker will try to get something going for Richmond. 14 possessions so far for the Spiders. They have only eight points. Now Baker, three, is partially blocked, but they're going to call a foul on Marston. Three shots coming up for Jonathan Baker. Well, there's a cardinal sin in basketball that you just never foul the three-point shooter. Now you're putting him up there for the hat trick, and you're putting up a guy who's a pretty good free-throw shooter. So let's take a look at Baker. He sizes up, and all of a sudden, Marston goes out. You know, you have to block his vision, or you have to get into his, his arm to the point he changes the arc, but you certainly don't want to whack him on the arm. 64% for the season from the foul line for the freshman. He's got a beautiful stroke. Last night, uh, Baker was six for six in, in the stretch when, when Mason tried to make a run at the Spiders. He came through with six for six. Cueto was four for four, and Stevenson was something like six for six. So they were something like 15 for 15 on the free throw line, which is very important in that game last night. But today is today, and it's 22 to 10. Part of a very young basketball team here at Richmond with uh, Cueto and Stevenson and Poole being sophomores and Baker just a freshman. He hits two out of three and it's 12 point advantage for the Rams as Reed brings it up. Reed is a natural wing player, plays the point uh, for Hamilton. When Hamilton gets a breather, he's the best backup uh, point guard to have since Ridges left the program. He does an adequate job. Good size, too, for a point guard. Oh, very good. Now Marston on the line, misses. The tip, no good. Another follow good by VCU. That's where their strength lies. They're an outstanding offensive rebounding team. Peabody with four points. Oh, brother, Bill Dooley got hit with a technical. Billy's complaint was uh, Peabody crashed in. He just climbed over the top of the back. So Billy's, foul been, shots. Billy's been arguing with Sam Court the Hogan. Let's take a look and see. Marson takes the J. Now watch the crash from Peabody because that's where the, the, the complaint lies from Dooley that he came over the top. It looks to me like he just went over the top of his own man rather mm -hmm. than the spider. And Marston misses. So one more on the way. 11.09 left to go in the first half. Richmond jumped out to an 11 or check that, VCU jumped out to an 11 nothing advantage and they've not looked back. The Marston hits. Very inauspicious start for the Spiders. They just, they just couldn't get on track with their ball handling and credit VCU's man-for-man -man defense. It was very aggressive and mm -hmm. it kicked off the offense. Now Reed. Spiders in a, in a zone, two, three zone. Now Reed traveled with it. See, one of the, some of the keys to the game, John, were that, that Spiders had to moderate the tempo, and zoning moderates the tempo, except you don't want to moderate the tempo if you get too far behind. Right. You'll never catch. Then you've got to scrap it. And Absolutely. I don't, the last thing they really want is a racehorse basketball game, but they may be forced into that. Well, you can't racehorse with this guy. they got 10 guys who can run like reindeer. Just four turnovers whistled against the Rams compared to seven for the Spiders. Cueto has it knocked out of bounds, so it'll be Richmond ball. 17 on the shot clock, there's still a lot of time. The Rams are doing an excellent job in taking shots away from Stevenson and Baker. So they're taking away the, the, the shot, putting them on the dribble, and they can't get shots off. Pressing out right now is very important before they can get set. Just press out on them before they can get set. Cueto all the way and in. Great move by the sophomore. Handsome looking shot from, from Cueto. Very good, well done. That's his first bucket of the night. Cut the lead to 13, the alley -oop. And it counts. Peabody from Marlowe Tally.
Now, let's take a look at this. It wasn't the most handsome pass, but watch the reception and the follow by people. That is a major league play. That almost looks like it's uh, NBA stuff. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a great pass, but it was a great finish. You know, years ago, we played coach would think you're nuts over throwing a pass like that. But now it's very much a part of the modern game, and it's very exciting. Peabody with seven, and it's a 16-point lead for the Rams, their biggest of the afternoon. And McKinney, who was charged with that last personal, is charged with another. That'll be his third. The Rams are doing a great job with their defense. Everything they're doing is unnerving the Spiders. Five team fouls against Richmond. His situation where McKinney cannot get out of the trap. There's no way he can get out of it until he busts through and he, and he had a, uh, a charge. And obviously it was an excellent call. There's not much you can do except post the ball and there's nobody in a post. The second unit has done an outstanding job for VCU. Very, very good defense. Everything they're doing is doing well. Now Reed in and out. The tip no good and Stevenson has the rebound for Richmond. I've never seen such bounce in the legs of Big John Smith because he's had a lot of problems, you know, for the years of the Stevenson in and out. Marston has it for the Rams, and now they're going to call a foul on Eric Poole as he threw Marlowe Talley to the floor. Bill Dooley can't wait for this half to get over if he can just survive somehow and maybe have a chance to make a run in the second half, but now VCU comes back with its starting five. They are a very focused team today. They have fresh legs and they're playing with great enthusiasm. This two platoon system is working wonders for Smith. He's got great, he's got great confidence in his reserves. They did a great job. 14 to two, you see the dominance of the Virginia Commonwealth bench. Now Hamilton back in the ballgame along with Chapel. Lee, who's in trouble, has the shot blocked and Richmond comes away with it. This is cool. Pool to Adam Ward, who's in the ball game. Senior out of St. Louis, Missouri, with his first bucket. Cuts it to a 14-point advantage. Now Bird, back out to Hamilton. Good solid ball movements are very good against zones to move that ball around and get high percentage shots with good crisp shot passing. Hamilton. There's that one badly. And Edwards has it for the Spiders. Up to Cueto. Cueto has the pass deflected by Chapel. It'll be Richmond basketball. That was an odd pass from Cueto. He's driving left and pass to his right. It's very, very difficult to complete that pass. Stevenson will inbound. Now Coito will back it up. When they back it up, the defense should press out on them so they can't run their stuff. Press out and they won't be able to operate. Coito back to Ward. Now Poole with it. Shot clock to eight. Coito baseline. Hopkins with it. To Chapel. What a move by Ivan Chapel. This young man can finish it off. Perhaps the best finisher in the entire league. Chapel with nine, the lead back to 16. Chapel a perfect four for four this afternoon. Now Stevenson forces it up, but he's going to shoot a pair. Chapo is the X factor on this team. I call it a quiet assassin. You don't notice him. At the end of the night, he's got 10, 12 points, 6, 8 rebounds, plays great defense, strong, plays you very strong defensively. He's a very, very important part of their, of their team. Foul was on Patrick Lee, his second foul, team's fifth, and it puts Stevenson, an outstanding foul shooter at the line, 81%. He hits it. That's his first point in the afternoon, and obviously, Dick, that's key. Yes, well, he's got to get on track. If he doesn't score, they must have been inside and, and pack it in. He's got to get on track. 7.51 to go, first half. VCU leading it by 14. We'll take a break and be back after this. Dick, VCU. 
this may be some of the best basketball they've played all season. Well, they're being very physical, and I think part of their game plan was to be very physical and they up the tempo, run a lot of transition, and just wear these kids down. And they're look, already tired. They have two games this week, one of which is in Wilmington, plus last night, so they're doing the right thing. And Richmond's only taken 10 shots in this first half. We've played almost 13 minutes. That's they can't get the shot off. The defense is so outstanding. Lee with a great pass inside to Hopkins. Hopkins with seven. The great, he has great hands. The lead is 16. What a look by Lee. I'm telling you, that was a great pass and a great catch. Stevenson and Edwards. More defense. Chapel. Hamilton. And Patrick can't handle it. It'll be VCU ball. But the defense has been outstanding. George Burgess made what we call a back hedge. He went out and he, and he caused a turnover. And every time it turns over, they rush down the floor, three on two, four on three, getting advantages and good shots. Lee will take a seat. Ben Peabody back in the Ram lineup. Now Hopkins stops from 13 and gets the roll. Hopkins has nine. He does it all, that young man. Chapel has nine. Tally has seven. And Peabody has seven. Tremendous balance as well. Now Adam Ward back in the spider lineup to Patrick. Now Stevenson with a nice move. His first field goal. He's got four. The lead back to 16. Now Hamilton, who's yet to score today for the Rams, believe it or not. He's doing a very good job of, of, of controlling the tempo, though. He does a great job with tempo control. Now Hamilton for three. Rebound to Bird. And now Stevenson has it for Richmond. Aqueto. Stevenson travel with it. 6-0-1 left in the half. BCU by 16. Eric Poole's coming back in the Richmond lineup. That is 12 Richmond turnovers. Well, pressure defense is, a, is, is what causes turnovers. Last night, Mason put no pressure on it. Played in a very passive zone, and there was no problem. But boy, this is some defense today. Absolutely. Hamilton to Chapel. Now Peabody back to Hamilton. to Hopkins. Chapel with the unorthodox three. Won't go, and they fight for it, and a whistle. And they call it against Richmond. And Bill Dooley, obviously not enamored with that call. Going to call that on Edwards. That'll be his second. And it will be a one and one as VCU now in the bonus. Big guys in, are in trouble already for Richmond, and uh, they just they just don't have the bodies to, to battle these big, strong guys. It's going to be a very, very long day. Hopkins misses, but Hamilton man. has the rebound. Look at them get after it. They're playing with a team, very, very, very focused team today, VCU. This is Peabody. Before the shot, they're going to call a hand check against Cueto. Believe me, VCU was not this was not this focused or this sharp last Saturday at the Robinson Center. They just you know wrapped up their first place and they were a little bit uh, a little bit downtrodden. I don't know what's the proper word. Downtrodden might not be it, but they could have been had. They're not going to be had today. It doesn't appear. Actually, that foul was on Eric Poole, and that's worse news for Richmond. That'll be number three on the sophomore Eric Poole. And it puts Peabody at the line for one and one. Peabody now with eight. Jonathan Baker checks in for Carlos Cueto. Also, Charles Jefferson in the lineup. He'll replace Poole, who's on the bench now with his third personal foul. Peabody with nine. 5.20 to go. And VCU extending now because that'll, that'll cause a tempo to get up and unnerve them even further. All this unnerves teams. And it's slapped out of bounds. It'll be Richmond ball. Richmond's a pretty good three-point shooting team. They can't get three-pointers off. They're just putting them on the move. They're pressing up too close to them to even think about getting threes off. Now Baker, who had a tournament record of eight three-pointers last night. 
Guarded by Hamilton. Hamilton's defense has improved drastically this year. Another turnover. Number 13, Hopkins. A little bit too long on the pass intended for Hamilton. I'll tell you, some of those passes are tough to catch. Those bounce passes in the open floor are very difficult. You bring big kids down low, John. You know, you throw a bounce pass at that distance, you're bringing big guys on the run down below their knees to catch it. Very difficult to catch. I'd rather see an air pass. Adam Ward. To Baker. Now Ward, another, another turnover at Travel. Number 14 against Richmond. Turnovers have been the demise of the Spiders all year. Very young team that gets get, uh, unnerved when they get pressured, and this is a uh, case in point today. More than double. Spiders remain in the 2-3 zone. Trying to, trying to keep the tempo somewhat moderate, but VCU, well, they just attack. Peabody, a nice block from behind. It'll be VCU ball, but a nice defensive play. There's four fifths of a platoon. Not quite a two platoon, four, four of the subs. Marlowe Talley, Scott Marston, Marcus Reed, and Jonathan Smith back in the ball game for VCU. They'll stay in with Peabody. This is Reed. To Peabody. Tally. Tally can't get the roll. Jefferson clears the board for the Spiders. And Stevenson. Now Baker. Baker misses a three. Edwards has it. And his hook shot's good from the baseline. So Rick Edwards has four. That's the lead back to 16. One of the few offensive rebounds I've seen for the Spiders all night. Shot too long, but Baker couldn't gather the rebound. Peabody gets it back, and he'll go to the line. Ben Peabody is getting after it, as they say in the trade. He is getting it after it all over the floor. On the floor, both boards, so active. And, and really, that rebound should have been collected by the Spiders. They may just be a step slow because they're a little on the tired the, side. The ball went right, right past Baker, like he was, like he was uh, slept on a cot in the locker room overnight. I guess these kids left here about 9 o'clock last night. We're back here at 9 o'clock this morning. Maybe they should have stayed here. Peabody now with 10. Not a bad reserve, Ben Peabody. Not at all. <laughs> Would be a bad starter for most no, of them. Absolutely. And Tally. This is that one. Ward has it for the Spiders. And Baker with the Spiders down 17. Now Edwards to Baker. Jefferson inside the arc hits. Jefferson with two. 15 point advantage as we approach the three minute mark. Peabody will work the right side. Scott Marston. Rebound, and a foul can be whistled against VCU. That'll just be the sixth team foul, so it'll still be just possession to the Spiders. This is the common foul. That personal foul is on Marlowe Talley. 2.48 left in this first half of play. It's all VCU in the quarterfinal round here at the Richmond Coliseum. Welcome back to the Richmond Coliseum. I'm joined here by Paul McKenzie and scouts in the Miami Heat. Now, Bernard Hopkins, Player of the Year. What do you think of him? Well, he's, he's working hard. Uh, it's tough to tell us so early because they came out to a good, good lead, so he hasn't had that much playing time. Uh, I'm out here with the Miami Heat trying to find that special player that's going to help them uh, go into the playoffs and help them uh, in the future. So uh, I'm looking at a little bit of everybody, uh, focusing in on a couple special people, but looking overall for the whole, for everybody's whole game. Who else will you be looking at throughout the weekend? I'll be looking at uh, Odell Hodge uh, from uh, from Old Dominion and uh, anybody I can find. All right, thanks. Guys? All right, thanks, Melissa. Of course, Odell Hodge with Old Dominion. They'll be playing tonight at 7 o'clock against James Madison. Now Jefferson with a spin. The tip no good. And we're going to call a, a foul inside against VCU. 
you know, Dick, an, an unusual quirk here. Really, Richmond, when they're shooting the ball, they've been pretty effective. Eight out of 14, 57 percent, but they've turned the ball over as many times as they've shot. That's right. They, they just can't get good shots. You know, just I like to make a point. That, that, you know, to young coaches out there or young players, that you can certainly play man-for-man -man defense very aggressively and, and, and pressurize this complete and still not foul. VCU is not yet in the bonus, and they've played tremendous man-to-man -man defense throughout the entire first half. The Edwards. last foul out of bounds was a, a common foul, am I correct? That was, but the yes. rebound foul put him at seven, right, so it is a one-on-one right. one so for just Edwards. now, with, with two minutes to go, they rushed now one into the bonus, but... Uh, position is everything in man-to-man -man defense. You have to know your positioning and still play very aggressive and pressure up, get right inside the jerseys. If he can make this, this will be as close as Richmond's been in quite a while. Down to 13 points. Richmond, 8 out of 9 from the line. And with that, VCU puts the first five back at the scorer's table. Or at least four of the first five. Now Marston for three. Nothing to it. Sonny thinks he's a very, very fine uh, addition to the team because he shoots it well against zones. That was a nice three. That opened things up to 16 again. That's his first three of the afternoon. Scott Marston. Freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio with four points today. Now Jefferson for three. A little bit strong. Peabody got a hand on it. Let's see who they call. They think they got Edwards. And that will be number three on Rick Edwards. So the two big players for Richmond, McKinney and Edwards, with three personal fouls. And I think Poole has two, does he not? To Eric Poole so also got, with three. So yeah. they've got a major foul problem. Edwards in his attempt to go to go after it really bashed right into the VCU players. And it's a pretty easy call. So they have three big men with three fouls each at the half and they're down 16. It's going to be a long, long day for uh, the Spiders, I'm afraid. And two shots for Peabody as they move into the double bonus with that 10th team foul. Peabody with 10 points. He leads all scores. Make it 11. Peabody played a very fine game at the Robins Center last Saturday. He is a tremendous uh, kid off the course. He's a regular, in effect. I mean, he starts, he started last year, starts half the time this year. But if it's Lee off the bench or Peabody off the bench, they got a terrific backup two guard, that's for certain. Peabody is 6'4", senior out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Very nice touch for Peabody. Six of his... 12 have been from the foul line. Under two minutes to play in this first half. Now Cueto. They go inside. Baker for three. It'll be VCU ball. Baker. As hot as he was last night, he's every bit that cold this afternoon. Well, last night he's 8 for 11, but he, he's shooting against a George Mason uh, defense, a George Mason zone, which was very passive, to say the least. This is, there's no passivity in these Rams, I'll tell you that, on defense. A turnover against VCU. Up the floor to Patrick. He controls it before it goes out of bounds. Now Stevenson in the corner. Back out front to Cueto. One minute left in this first half. Nice crossover. Stevenson. Now Patrick from 16. Hamilton got a hand on it. Basketball belongs to VCU. With 44.2 seconds left in this first half. And Marcus Reed back in the VCU lineup. He'll take over for Peabody. Adam Ward back in the spider lineup as Jonathan Baker takes a seat. The Rams just can't break down, the Spiders can't break down the Rams on, on a dribble. They just cannot get any place off the dribble against a very, very good man for man defense by BCU. Now Chapel on the left wing. This is George Bird. He really hasn't gotten that many minutes this afternoon. Hopkins, back to Reed. Another three for the Rams. This is like a clinic. VCU, five out of 11 from behind the three-point arc. And now foul's gonna be whistled against VCU. It's Hamilton. That will be number one on Sherman Hamilton. One and one coming up for Carlos Cueto. 
4.1 seconds left in this half. Cueto with a one and one. 74% foul shooter. The rebound. Stevenson got it blocked from behind. They call a jump ball, and the possession arrow goes to VCU. And dip. That kind of sums up this first half. Absolutely. Most frustrating first half I've seen for Bill Dewey in the whole season. 2.1 seconds left for VCU to get off a shot. Bird throws it the length of the floor. Kicked out of bounds off of Hopkins. But that's going to do it for this first half. A very impressive first 20 minutes of play for VCU. They jump out to an 11 nothing advantage. And right now they head to the locker room up by 21. Our score at the break. VCU 45, Richmond 24. Let's head back to our HTS studios and George Johnson. VCU in charge. Now Stevenson gets fouled by Hamilton. Another key for Richmond. Stevenson only one out of three from the field. Jonathan Baker, zero oh out of two. Well, they have from to the get. Field. They have to get scoring, and they have to get some threes. This team cannot score big points unless they get some threes. But the defense has been outstanding. Baker to Cueto. Now Stevenson a travel. Turnover number 15. I think one of the shot clocks is down um, off this basket. So we have to use the shot clock at one end only. You notice well, that? They've got one in the right corner, but I that, see. that same thing happened last night. Yeah. I see that that went down, and we have one down in the corner as the women used to have. It. Now Hamilton and VCU on the attack. Now Lee guarded by Baker. Spiders remained in their 2-3 zone. Hopkins, Chapel with the follow. You have to block out. Whether you're in the zone or man-to-man, -man, nobody put a body on Chapel coming here from the offside. Somebody's got to find the crashers and put a body on them. I don't care if you're in the zone or not. Chapel now in double digits with 11. He slaps it out of bounds, but they say it was touched by Stevenson before it did go out. So another turnover and it's VCU ball. Those coins are getting heavier and heavier and heavier. They got $50 worth of coins <laughs> in their pockets now. Their legs are heavy. Hamilton to Chapel. A young man out of Chesapeake, Virginia, Western Branch High School. Bird misses badly, and Cueto has it for the Spiders. It's one of the few breakaways of Havoc, and they get, they're getting, um, they had a good look on target by Baker that time, but they're not getting any easy shots whatsoever, the Spiders. Baker has it stripped. Now Lee. Hamilton travel with it as he slipped on a wet spot in the paint. The only way the Spiders are going to get threes is if they're going to get them in transition because the defense is just too solid, too sound, fresh legs, ten people. They can't get they can't get any shots on the half-court set. The Spiders yeah. Is, yeah. Richmond uh, losing the battle of turnovers badly. It also seems like when BCU does get a look, they're a little hesitant to pull the trigger. Two's out. Now Stevenson open. Rebound to Chapel. We played two minutes in the second half. VCU by 23. Hamilton wide open. Bags it. It's his first point of the ball game. But if you needed Hamilton, he'd come through. Every time I've seen this young man this year, when a game's on the line, he, you can depend upon him for key shots. Now Edwards with a bad pass, picked off by Lee. Three, Three on two. two. And Hamilton scores, so he had to score, but now he's got five quick ones. VCU is a very impressive team in transition. Timeout. I, be I believe it's going to be a full timeout, so we'll take a break. VCU on top 52 to 24, 17, 19. So let's keep it right here, Dick. And, and once again, what can Bill, what can Bill be telling his ball club well, right now as we look at this? Not very much, uh, you know. I don't know what he can say. He's a box out in the zone, get back for defense. All the things he's asked them to do, they don't have any juice left in the tank. I just think they're, they're completely out of gas. And VCU is loose as a goose, running, reserves coming in. It's just, uh, it's men against boys right now. It's a, 
It's a bunch of little kids playing against the mature guys. I really think VCU would have been a very good team had the Metro stayed alive this year. Right up there at the top with Tech. I think they're that good. There's a veteran team, and I think they can play with anybody. And, boy, if you look at that, 49 points between Stevenson and Baker last night. So far today, just six. Now Poole, down low, gets fouled. Can get the roll, but Eric Poole will shoot too. And Dick, this is the first year, of course, with VCU entering the conference that the CAA has had a play-in game. Different conferences do it different ways, but to have it the night before at 6 o'clock and then to turn around and play at noon the next day, that's a tough thing to ask a ball club to do. Well, it is, but, you know, you make concessions for the number one team. You don't make concessions for the number eight team. If you wind up at eight or nine, that's your fault. I think the concessions for... for the quality time, which is noon time, to give you sufficient rest for the semifinals, should go to number one team. So you make concessions to eight or nine, or do you make concessions to one? The one thing I think might be done by the league this year, they might move this game to the second game on, on Saturday afternoon. I believe that's the way the ACC does it. Yes, it is. So they'll play at, at three, perhaps, rather than noon. Cool. Connects again on the line drive. He's got six. That personal foul was on Bird. Just his first and only the second team foul against VCU. VCU's doubled the score right now, 52 to 26. Hopkins missed the easy, the follow one won't go. Now Baker has it for the Spiders. You don't see Hopkins miss easy shots like that very often. Plato has it taken away. Lead at Chapel. Another strong finish for the senior junior college transfer from Otero Junior College. He's six out of seven from the field, 13 points to lead all scorers. Does he get out on the break or does he get out on the break? Very athletic individual. And he's strong. And he guards you. He's the quiet assassin of the VCU Rams. 28-point lead for VCU. Edwards' right hand won't go, and now they're going to call a foul over the back against Hopkins as we take a look at that fast break slam by Chapel. If Chapel is under control, he takes one giant step and then gives up and just puts it home. The fewer dribbles you can take, the better. You notice these players who make these jams take very few dribbles on the way to the goal. Take a look again. He just, he just put it down once, stretch it out, stretch out, extend, and put it home. Cueto to Edwards, and he missed the easy one. Stevenson gets it back. Bird with the rejection. Block number 57 this season for Big George Bird. 15-52 to go in regulation. It is all Virginia Commonwealth University in quarterfinal action of the CAA tournament. Welcome back to the Richmond Coliseum. John Castleberry along with Dick Tarrant. You know, last night in the play-in game, Richmond was 12 out of 25 from three-point territory. This afternoon, they have not hit a single three-point field goal. That just goes to prove it's, it's um, permissiveness. Obviously, the permissiveness of, of Mason permitted Spiders to have a, a dozen threes. This team permits nothing. We're seeing a total intimidation by a big, strong men just toying around with boys. VCU, six out of 12 from three-point territory. They finally have a field goal in the second half. Now Bird to Hopkins. Cool with a strong rebound. Edwards runs it down in the corner. Side. Cool. Edwards with a follow. Nice follow in. Nice strong rebound by Poole on the last sequence on defensive end. Edwards leads the Richmond scorers with eight points this afternoon. Nice look inside to Hopkins. Little breakdown of man-to-man -man defense at time for the Spiders. They needed a back hedge, and I've Cueto got rubbed off, and just man just went right around him for great position. The 
key to this game is VCU defense. It is outstanding. Uh, Baker. Edwards. Cueto. I think it was partially blocked, and now Hopkins and the Rams on the run, three on three. That time Chapel couldn't control it, but they say it's going to belong to the Rams. Adam Ward enters the Richmond lineup. Cueto will go to the bench. Here's, here's Hopkins in the middle of the break. See, look away pass. Um, it was muffed by, by Chapel, but Hopkins can do so many things. He loves to run the break. 245-pound guy around the middle of fast break. He's, a, he's very fluid in the open floor. Rick Edwards replaced by Jason McKinney. Now Baker deflects the inbounds pass, and it's still going to be VCU ball. 14-20 to go in regulation. VCU jumped out to a quick 11-0 advantage. They were up 21 at the half, and right now it's a 26-point lead. Hopkins. Now Poole touched it, but he was on the baseline when he did so, so it'll be VCU ball. Absolutely nothing has gone the Spiders' way, whether it's whether it's an out of bounds or whatever. It's just it's just not their day. They just are playing with men who are just too far advanced for them. Now Lee was open momentarily. No, we got a kick. Reset. Call a kick. And They'll reset the shot clock, and now five fresh bodies coming into the ball game for the Rams. And this group was very effective in several stints in the first half. We have a term in basketball that says getting after them. The Rams got after the spider when they come on the locker room. They weren't even on the floor for warm-ups, and they decided they're going to attack. They have been in attack mode since the opening tip. Marston out front to Peabody. Reed, Talley, and Smith also in the ball game for the Rams. Now, that's nearly a steal, and it is a steal by Ward, he's fouled from behind by Talley. Actually, they call that on Peabody. That'll be number three on Ben Peabody, who had 12 points in the first half. Richmond, 18 turnovers now, and shooting 37% from the field. Stevenson to pool, but it's slapped away by Smith. Collected by Reed. Now this is Tally. Reed works the baseline. Rebound to Ward. Continuing to struggle from the field. Pool with a nice fake. Now McKinney has it blocked, but it goes anyway. So finally they get a break, Dick. Well, that's why I think I think it was blocked by Peabody. It went in the goal, but obviously it's awarded to McK McKinney. The closest he's, by the two. He's got four. <laughs> Offensive foul against VCU. They got Marcus Reed. Illegal screen by Reed is a, what they call a moving screen. If you're going to screen, you have to jump, stop, screen. You cannot be on the move. So you youngsters out there, remember, if you're going to do any screening, jump, stop, screen. Number one on Reed, 15 foul against the Rams. No team fouls in this second half against Richmond. Now Ward takes it to Baker. Stevenson back to Ward. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen Adam Mobley, a, a three-point shooter for Richmond. Yeah, for some reason, he hasn't gotten off the bench. He played quite a bit uh, last night. But... Boy, oh boy, these are discombobulated. Is that a good word? They are disjointed. I think that, uh, that pretty well sums it up, yeah, Dick. Uh, a... Baker, normally a, a very crafty ball handler for, for no reason, uh, it's turned it over. This completely out of whack. It's, it's disjointed as can be. 20 turnovers? Got have more turnovers than a field goal. Marston to Smith. Ward another rebound. Stevenson for three, and finally they hit a three. Is that the first three of the night? First three oh, of the ball game for the Spiders. Amazing. Stevenson now with seven. 
Took him almost 29 minutes to hit a three, and now we've got a foul. Richmond one out of eight from three-point territory. Nick Patrick's going to check in the lineup when we come back. 11.39 to go in regulation. VCU led by 21 at the half, and they lead by 21 right now. Welcome back to the CAA tournament. Joining me here is Jan Smith, wife of coach Sonny Smith, VCU coach, and it must have been exciting for him to be known as coach of the year, especially his first year in the conference. It really was. We have enjoyed our year in the CAA, and it was really great to get that honor. Now you must be at ease out there in the stands with VCU dominating the floor the way they have. We're doing very well with that. I am. Uh, of course, I've been doing this for 38 years, so, so it's not as hard as it used to be. All right, thank you. Guys? Thank you, Melissa. Easy score inside for John Smith. Gets the lead back up to 23 for the Rams. Now they put more pressure in, and this time a bumping foul against Reed. Take a look at it once again, Dick. They get the ball inside so easily. If the big guys catch it there, it's going to be tough to stop. Well, Smith pinned his man, turned around and put a, a two-hand jam. And, you know, Smith's had very, very bad knees, but I see him running today better than he has uh, for a long time. Boy, if he ever comes through for them a little bit, they will be dynamite if they join the semifinal and finals. Now Baker, double team, no foul this time, and taken away by Reed. Comes up dribbling. Now Tally. Peabody. Now Tally's foul line jumper. Good. Oh, Hello, Tally with eight. The Rams are cooking. They're playing very unselfishly. They have good shot discipline. They're rebounding, playing great defense. Now, Richmond had been on a nice little run. They were on a 9-2 run in the last four and a half minutes to get it down to 21. But now BCU has scored the last four. And another turnover against the Spiders at travel. Number 22 on the afternoon. They'll need a run of major proportion to get back in this. And here's a situation where uh, Duels is very upset with a call by, by the referee on a, on a foul on his young man. A spin off. He said he used his uh, arm and hooked him, obviously. A spin play by Patrick. Here come five new ones for the Rams. Reed down low. This is Tally. One hand. Oh. Bad miss, but gets it back. And gets fouled. Tally threw up one of the, one of the only uh, forced shots I've seen today from the Rams. That was not a good shot for Tally, but they go get it. And this is they go get it doesn't look so bad. That fouls on Jonathan Baker, his first. Only the second team fouls. We approach the midway point of the second half, and Baker will take a seat. Cueto's back in the lineup for the Spiders. Career high of 30 last night, but only two points today. Jonathan Baker. This unit is who to key upon. Yeah. When Baker gets the ball, they're right in his jersey. When Steven get, gets the ball, they're inside his jersey. When Poole gets the ball, they lay off. Edwards gets the ball, they lay back. Uh, they know they know the, the personnel very, very well, and they're doing a super job. Tally now has 10. That's the fourth VCU player to reach double digits this afternoon. Tally will go to the bench. And the new group in for the Rams. Chapel, Hopkins, Hamilton, Lee, and Bird. Richmond up the floor to Ward. Now this is Patrick. Rejected. Hamilton got the block. Now Lee, nice look inside. And the perseverance pays off for Bird. 29-point advantage, biggest of the ball game. They're getting block shots from the point guard. Hamilton crushed that last one. Cueto for three, and he got it. Lead a bird. Great ball movement, very unselfish play. Result, high percentage shots. Now Cueto gives it to Ward. McKinney's miss on the baseline. It'll be Ram ball. Bill Dooley wanted the foul. And now Adam Mobley comes in the ball game with 9.08 left in regulation. He'll replace Adam Ward. 
Also Jefferson back in the Richmond lineup. Dominance, uh, not just in the starting five, but also on the bench. This has been a trademark of VC all, all year long. They get a tremendous, tremendous input from the bench. I'm going to call McKinney for his fourth personal on a hand check. I don't know, uh, John, whether he keeps statistics on this, bench scoring, but I would think that VCU's bench scoring is as good as any team in the country. They get somewhere between 25 and 30 percent of their total input from the bench. I think the only team in this conference that would rival them in, in terms of minutes played by the non-five uh, starters would have to be Old Dominion. They yes. play a lot of players as well. Yes, but I don't know if they get close to 30 percent of the no, scoring. No, I don't think it's, it's quite the, that much. Not that Pogue is a starter now. Yeah. Right. Uh, of course, later today, we've got the 4-5 the game between American University and East Carolina. Looking forward to that. That should be a good one. And then tonight, the doubleheader, Old Dominion takes on a red-hot James Madison ball club. And then William and Mary will battle UNC Wilmington. Tonight's game should be good, particularly the Old Dominion uh, Madison. This is Cueto to Edwards. Stolen by Chapel. BCU with a 30-point lead in the basketball. Make it 32. Hopkins now 15 points, five rebounds, five assists, and those are the intangibles that you talk about, Dick, the, the things he gives you other than just scoring. Hopkins, he lets the game come to him. Edwards up and under. Too strong with it. Hopkins another rebound. His sixth. Almost his sixth assist, but the miss gives the basketball to Stevenson, and now Chapel gets it back. Heading down the stretch, John Castleberry along with Dick Tarrant. The onslaught continues. VCU, very impressive. Boy, they talk about stop the bleeding. I don't know, that's an understatement. Let's take a look at this. Here's, we're talking about a dunking derby. You're one after the other. After the other. It's just an out and out dunking derby. Richmond's Cueto gets it to Stevenson. Another turnover. This is Reed. Nice move. And it counts. Peabody's first bucket of the second half, a three-point play opportunity coming up. His generating your offense off the defense. Reed, who's very fast, gets ahead of the field. He finds his buddy, and he lays it off, and it results in a shot, and the finish, and the foul. Stop the bleeding is an understatement. Foul was on Jefferson, his second, fourth team foul, and Peabody missed it, but he got it back. Tally. Tally double team and Cueto stripped him. Cueto all the way. Can't complete it. VCU up with it. Peabody threads the needle. And a travel against VCU. Six forty-six to go. Sonny just said, "Save someone this for tomorrow." Sonny looks awfully concerned, but oh, <laughs> he's up. He's up thirty-four. Save someone this juice for tomorrow because they are just having a bunch of fun. The kids having a great time with the lead. The crowd is behind them. They are playing out of their board. Offensive foul against Stevenson. Twenty-six turnovers. On the day for the Richmond Spiders. This might be some kind of a record for turnovers before this is all over. Well, it's the season high for the Spiders, so it's a record as far as they're concerned today. That's a dubious uh, record. 
the infamous day. This could be a day in infamy for the Spiders. And remember, the last time they played in this building, it was a 28-point margin. That was the largest in the history of the series. Oh, boy. Uh, they're on their way to stopping that as Cueto with another steal. It's three on one. Stevenson converts. I don't think that's exactly what Cueto had in mind, but it counts. It's a line drive in the box score, they say. But it's so far out of the woods, it doesn't make a difference. 34-point lead for VCU. Peabody with a dish. Marston in the right place at the right time, and he's going to shoot two. Cueto's personal foul. I don't think somebody's going to go back to Hopkins or Hamilton or Bird for the rest of the game. I just think he's let these guys finish. I mean, these are reserves are, are uh, as good as half the teams in the league, it seems to me. Well, he had pretty good balance in the first half. Uh, Hopkins yeah. got 13 minutes in the first half. Uh, four of his five starters got 13 minutes. And then Peabody had 11 minutes off the bench. So I would imagine they're going to play about half a ball game is what it boils down to. And Marston misses. They'll be back here tomorrow afternoon at 3.30 for a matchup against the winner of our second game this afternoon, either East Carolina or American University. During the regular season, AU swept East Carolina. Marston gets one out of two. Cueto gets the score. Thirty-three point lead. Tally for three. Wait till the spiders. Out of bounds. Basketball belongs to the Rams with 5.15 to go. Quito's exhausted. His legs just gave out. It's like a a cult running and all of a sudden he, he collapses. He just doesn't have any legs whatsoever. He just give out. Nobody was yeah. near him. He just absolutely exhausted. Tripped himself up. Reed all the way. Reed with five. The lead 35. Jonathan Baker, Patrick's wide open, off the glass and in. First bucket for Nick Patrick and only the third three-pointer for the Spider Ball Club this afternoon. down off the dribble and raised up and made a nice middle J. That man from Hamilton, Ontario is Edwards can't handle the pass and will go the other way. Off the foot of Jonathan Baker. 4-0-1 to play. A couple of subs coming in the Richmond lineup. Adam Ward and David Hensel. Hensel, a 6-9 freshman from Springdale, Pennsylvania, as Cueto and Edwards take a seat. Sonny Smith has got to be thrilled with his ball club's performance this afternoon. Uh, I've seen VCU play a lot this year, John. I haven't seen him play better than they have today. Execution has been marvelous. Another jumper in by Reed. Reed with seven. Back to a 36-point advantage. Reed tipped it. Martin got it, and Tally finished it. Thirty-eight point lead. Baker for three. Patrick gets it back, and a foul on Tally. Three twelve to go.
lot of coaches around the league say, I like the substitutes on the VCU team. You look at you look at Tally, you look at uh, Peabody, and you look at Reed, and you look at John Smith, Marston. Boy, it's today's game. You have to have quality depth. Years ago, you could play with five or six. Now you need eight or nine, and they have to be players. Case in point is Kentucky. Have you ever seen a team with more quality depth in all your years as Kentucky has this year, John? That's a, a, an awesome basketball team. As we see most of the starters on the bench right now. Oh, they're as loose as a goose. They just think about tomorrow afternoon we do this again. Patrick gets the roll. 3-12 to go in regulation. VCU in a rout. I think the top of the league is better, much, much better than the bottom. At the time that I first started covering the CAA, the top teams were were closer to the bottom. There, there was there was some parity, but I believe now that the, 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 the parity has disappeared. So tell us what you were doing here for the first CAA tournament. I was a sports editor and a columnist for the Richmond Times Dispatch, and now I'm executive editor of the paper. I am not here working; I'm just here spectating. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, guys. Right. Thank you, Melissa. You see VCU, very good shooting percentage uh, for the season. VCU, 47%, but really the 29 turnovers, the, the big number there. Well, the big thing about the turnovers, are most of them were forced by VCU's aggressive defense. There were not too many unforced turnovers. They were forced turnovers, and you must credit great man-to-man -man defense by the Rams. Marlowe Talley now with 14 points. VCU has switched to a zone just, just to... He's it up, just a fool around. He's, he's not he's a zone coach whatsoever, but he's just doing it for give them a chance to uh, get some shots on target. Mobley misses on his first shot of the afternoon. You don't think maybe Sonny might throw a zone against uh, a ball club later on in this tournament? I don't think so. He, he's used it very, very little this year. He's boxing one the uh, Stevenson last Saturday at the Robin Center, but I haven't seen much zone. I've seen him a lot this year. He's not a zone coach. Marston will inbound. I think the VCU fans want to see 100. They're going to have to hustle to get 100. Yes, yes. 15 in the last two minutes. Yeah, yeah. Nice look to Tally. Has it blocked by Patrick, and Mobley has it. Mobley, a long three. Patrick with the rebound. And this rebound pulled down by Smith. Well, not a strong two-hand rebound by Smitty. And Joe Martin to Reed. Smith spins. Marston got it. And he gets fouled. 126 to play. And if they connect from the line twice here, it'll be a 40-point lead, which will be the biggest of the day. I think Sonny went and dressed the team manager. It looked like he just went inside. Once you put a uniform on, I'll put you in. And he sent this kid in, and he's the manager. And he brought him back out to play. The young man's name is Wood. He's the manager. Eight to five. Well, he literally is not listed in their, well, I told their you. tournament press guide. I saw him sneak inside we know before. His, we know his last name is Wood. I saw him tiptoe inside before and slip on the uniform. Doesn't have his name on the back. Marston hits twice. It's a 40-point lead. Patrick's oh, jumper oh, oh. partially blocked but tipped in by Hensel. His first point. Wood steps back with an air ball off of Jonathan Baker. He's used to carrying the towels and, and uh, equipment. He's not used to shooting the ball. He's a team manager. You don't have to look anything up. Let me tell you, he's the manager. I saw him slide inside before, slip on. That's why the uniform doesn't fit him very well. He's wearing Hopkins' old shirt. 
Mobley has the inbounds pass. Adam Ward to Patrick, who slams it down. That's the highlight of the day for the Spiders. It's Chris Slam Wood. Back. Chris Wood, number 12 for the Rich for the uh, VCU Rams. Now Reed with a nice move in the score. Reed is very fast. That's a nice backup point guard, isn't it? He's got <laughs> nine points. You're absolutely Boy, right. He's good. They're all good. They're a good team. 30 seconds left. Now Hensel gets fouled from behind by Smith. So they're not going to make 100. No, but... But they've left... Uh, they, they have served notice that they have left they're the ready. They have left a mark on the rest of the field. <laughs> I, I just don't see uh, tomorrow's entry, be it uh, American U or East, East Carolina, staying within, with this team whatsoever. Now, Monday night might be a different story, but right now, they're ablaze. They are on fire. Hensel now with three. Coaches like this young man. He's a freshman, and they think he's going to be a player, but he's just very, very thin and underdeveloped. And he, nice touch. He's a, he's a feisty kid. He jumps well, blocks shots. This is by far Richmond's worst setback ever in a CAA tournament. They had lost by 13 points to Wilmington a couple years ago, and this is going to come close to tripling that margin. Mm. Reed loses it. Adam Warren again with 10 seconds left. Ward, the senior, gets the roll. Four seconds left. Reed fires a long three. And that's going to do it. VCU, the number one seed, advances on the strength of an 89-55 victory. Very impressive. The largest of the season and a CAA tournament victory. Let's take a break. We'll come back and talk more about this victory and also what we've got ahead in quarterfinal action as VCU wins going away. The Rich Food player of the game, no question about it. Bernard Hopkins, 15.6 rebounds and five assists. Bernard Hopkins, the conference player of the year, and he joins us right now. Uh, just a great performance for you guys this afternoon. Yeah, we had uh, five days of hard practice. I think we had the best practice of uh, the whole season. Uh, we've been uh, preparing so well uh, through the whole year, and uh, just taking one game at a time. We knew it was a three-game season for us. Uh, what happened during the regular season was all over. We're just going to take one game at a time. You're uh, uh, co correct. It's a new season, and you have to approach it as such. I thought the key to the game, Bernard, was when Richmond come out that you jumped down so quick with your pressure man-to-man -man defense. You know, within the confines of the half court, you got the, the half court marker, the sidelines, and you pressed up on them so well, you took them completely out of what they want to do. And once you got them into the running game, they, they can't go up and down with you people. So I think the key was you kicked off your offense with great defense. Do you agree with that? I mean, yes, the key uh, that was is the that. Uh, game plan. Coach Smith Absolutely. just said uh, yeah. 40 minutes of defense intensity and control the backboards, and uh, I think that's something we did tonight. Well, there's this two things you do very, very well. You're very physical and you, you do a great job on both boards, and your defense has got better and better and better, and right now, I think, as a team, you're peaking defensively. Do you agree with that? Yes, I think so. I think the second year, year oh. it comes in a game and uh, just plays just like the first year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, if we can get that every the late next three games, I think we can be real successful. I, I agree with you. There's, there's no drop-off when you put in guys like, like Peabody and put in guys like Reed and Tally, and John Smith had a good game, man. Yes. Everybody did a good job. Marston, but you got great quality depth. You got a great coach. You got a great leader. And Hopkins, I love you, man. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Coach. You know, Bernard, uh, your game, a lot of people think of you as a, an inside player once you get on the block, but, you know, you nailed a three-pointer today, and you get it out on, in transition so well and handle it in the middle for a big guy. That's something Coach Smith gave me an opportunity to do to handle it a lot. I mean, I don't feel it's necessary for me to shoot any three-pointers. We have so many great outside shooters, so uh, when the opportunity comes, if I'm open, I'm going to shoot it. Bernard, congratulations. Great win today. Good luck tomorrow and afternoon. You'll be in that first uh, semifinal contest against the winner of the second game. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you play there. Okay, thank you, sir. Bernard Hopkins, our Rich Food Player of the Game. We'll take a break right now. In fact, let's throw it to our HTS Studios and George Johnson. <laughs> 